These videos are for education. They're also for fun. I, I'm going to learn a lot too, okay? I don't know everything, but I know a lot of things that people don't share. Most racers don't share. If you're starting out, or even if you've been doing it a while, I mean, I've been involved in racing for 30 years, and I'll tell you, there is a lot that I don't know. And I have put my heart and soul into trying to learn everything there is to learn. I don't know everything. So again, thank you for tuning in and watching. Coming back, watching our second video, it means a lot to me. We're just gonna continue to move forward here with where we left off in the first video. So we decided to take the motor apart. All right, so we've got the pistons and rods out. Crank looks good, bearings look good, block looks okay. Everything in the block looks good except for the cylinders. The cylinders had some scuffing, okay? And here's what's odd. If you look, let's turn it over here. Okay, you're seeing the hard anodizing has worn off of the piston right below the top ring land, about 90 off from the wrist pin, okay? Now, I've never seen it wear here and not here. A lot of people are like, you know, it's kind of common knowledge that if you're getting issues up here, it's probably your tune-up. It could be a fueling or a timing issue. And I agree with that. But when you don't have scuffing on the skirt and you just have scuffing below the top ring land, that's something that I've never seen before. So I called the piston manufacturer. I'm going to leave their name out of it because I'm not trying to put anybody down in this video at all. And what I'll tell you they told me was they believe that they've made the taper of the piston off. So the piston measurement here from my index finger to my index finger is smaller than the measurement at the bottom from here to here. So the piston has taper, okay? And if it doesn't have the correct taper or the correct skirt design, it's not gonna wear in the proper area. It's not going to guide itself to stay perpendicular in the bore without that correct measurement. And we believe that's what's going on here. And the piston manufacturer saw the, the pictures and they're like, hey, we think that's on us. Send us the pistons back. We'll correct it and we'll send you another set. And I'm like, man, that's stand up because most racing manufacturing companies do not ever stand behind their product. They tell you it's your fault and it doesn't matter how good you are. That's usually what they tell you. Let's take one that we haven't removed any of the rings from here. All right. So once you get your piston and rod out, you're taking a motor apart yourself. All right. You pull out on the ring, you lift it up, and you spin it around. It comes right off. That's how you remove rings. I'll, not, I'll never reuse my rings. I'm just throwing them to the side here. But we're going to repeat the process. Okay. We're going to take our second ring off. And while we're doing this and you're watching this, I'm going to talk to you about what ring package I run and the proper process of getting the correct piston and ring package. So what I did was I called Total Seal, which is a ring manufacturer in the racing world. They are the best rings available from the majority of the consensus of the racers. And what they told me was hey we want you to run this ring this ring and this ring for your application i said okay um called the piston manufacturer said make the pistons around this ring package they said no problem and it, that is how i got to the piston and ring combination that I run. Now, you're probably wondering what these little aluminum buttons are that keep falling out. Let's discuss that. A lot of pistons, most pistons that you're familiar with, you see this piston has what's called an oil ring support rail. This steel piece that looks like a ring that my fingernail is clipping against there, that is what this oil ring is supported by. It's just a support rail to hold the ring in because the wrist pin is moved far enough up in the piston 
to where it gets into the ring package. So if you use one of these, it keeps your ring, you know, a flat surface to seal against. Well, the problem with this is they're bad about flexing. And if they're bad about flexing and you're running a motor like mine that maybe makes 1700, 1800 horsepower in that range, and this flutters a little bit, and your oil ring over here doesn't scrape all the oil off the cylinder right there, oil detonates, and that means it ignites before the fuel does. It has a lower temperature flash point. It's going to cause your motor to detonate and cause issues. So what I did was I just had these aluminum buttons made because they make the piston a full round piece just to complete it and support that ring just a little better, less flutter, less chance of detonation, maybe a little more timing, maybe potentially a little more power. I don't even know if it's measurable, but they don't press in. They just slide in with your fingers after you install your spiral locks. Now, spiral locks, a lot of people talk about spiral locks and how much they hate them. And yes, I will tell you they are a bitch and I hate them as well. If you see in the piston, let's, all right. Here, see this spot that the tip of my screwdriver's in? Mm -hmm. That's designed to where you can get behind this spiral lock and you can flip it out, right? But the problem is most people don't turn the tip of the spiral lock to match in that so that they can get their screwdriver behind it and pop it out. When you're installing these, it's important to try to do that because it sure does make life easy when they come out. That's a little tip. Okay, so you can see that I've done that on this one. Can you see that? There you go. So now I'm gonna reach it's my- It's aligned right there. All right, and it comes out easy. See that? And once it comes up that high, you can just reach in here and pull it on out. The only problem is that kind of boogers up this machined area. So you just lay it over and you get something soft that you can lay down in the wrist pin like this right here, you can just tap it out. Okay, now let's pull that out, rod's off. We're gonna lay the rod in here. The screwdriver handle is a nice trick. Yeah, it's just anything soft, you know? So I put my piston over here and I'm ready to go to the next one. Okay, all the rods are off the pistons, ready to box the pistons up send them back to the manufacturer, and we are ready to move on to the next thing. Okay, what you see here is the front of our motor, our block. This is our timing system to time the cam to the crank, which essentially just means when the valves open in relation to the pistons. Now, why would you want a belt instead of a chain? Well, one thing is a belt doesn't transfer harmonics to the valve train, like a chain does. So your valves will actually stay seated better. The next thing is, externally, we can make quick cam timing changes. So if you see the A and the R, so I can literally walk right up to the motor in between rounds, loosen these four bolts, barely make a timing change, and tighten them back down and try different cam timing on the dyno or at the track, whatever it is that I choose. And that makes it really nice for people trying to get every last ounce of power out of their motor. So you'll see that this is a dark aluminum small block Chevy block. What I did was I put eight darting sleeves in it. I welded the deck so it's a dry deck so there's no coolant passages in the block anymore to go through the heads. We also put top fuel hoops in the heads and the receiver grooves in the top of the sleeves. Had uh, a friend of mine, Devin Grace, do that for me. So when I talked to Dart, they told me, look, this block will handle about 1700 horsepower at the flywheel, reliably no more. And I said, okay, how am I gonna make this live? Well, one of the ways that we did that was we ran really low timing. 
so we could run more boost, less timing, maybe make the same power, it's easier on the motor. We've had zero issues with the block, the block is in excellent shape. We're going to hone the cylinder walls and we're going to put it back together and go from there. Okay, that's going to conclude the teardown video. I hope that it was informative. I hope that you learned something. I know that I learned a few things. I learned that um, taper is very important on your pistons. And I took it for granted that I had always had that correct. So uh, I appreciate everybody tuning in and checking out our, our small block Chevy that we try to make bigger than it is. I know that a lot of people do that with their motors and, and, and all of this applies to all forms of motors. It's not just the small block Chevy. If you run a small block Ford, if you run an LS, if you run a big block Chevy, all of this is the same stuff. We're just doing it on a little different platform. So maybe we can all share knowledge and help each other. And I hope that all of you check our next video out. It's gonna be pretty cool. I'm gonna do some stuff on how to be competitive in no prep racing, what to do if you're starting out, what to do if you're struggling a little bit for speed, some of the stuff that I look for to help my program to be more competitive in the future and where we're headed. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.